You do that announced it was the year of Jubilee. Anybody have a ram's horn you could bring me? We could blow that horn a little bit. Not a ram now. I'm not talking about bringing the whole sheep. I'm just talking about the ram's horn. I mean, that's what it's about, to proclaim that as part of it. This is a year of Jubilee. Amen. All right, I caught some of you, but there you did. You did real good. This is the year of Jubilee as part of that whole thing. I tell you, that was all about... I, I only tell you that because... You know what? So we need those second starts. We need the second opportunity. We need to live out of the fullness of God rather than out of the emptiness. We need to do something with that to, to make that happen. Somebody uh, recently said to me, they go, what are you going to preach about? And I said, well, what I'm going to preach about is a little bit about, uh, you know, year of Jubilee. You know, we're going to let people think about how they want to be different at the end of the year than when they started the year. It's a John Wesley thing, you know, and put that together instead of being the same old, same old to be a little bit different as part of the whole thing. And and they kind of, I heard them as they kind of spoke to me. They said, you know what? They said, I, I don't know. I, I think we just need to kind of, I think we kind of got to get enthused and spirited with that whole thing and to, and to understand that, that it's not just for us to get filled, but for us to fill in order to do something. Now, did you hear what I just said? To be something different so that you can do something different. Can I be clear about that? Be something different to do something different. That's what John Wesley was all about as he put his piece together. As they were reminding me, and I need to remind myself, and we need to remind every one of us, that's what the scripture is all about. It says that, you know what? Do you, do you see the church of Jesus Christ in the world in which we live? Do you see how many people just come to church for themselves and then leave this place? And some of them can't even get all excited. They can't get the enthusiasm. And the, because you know what? It's the same old, same old. Why do you come here to church? Why do you come on Sunday morning? Is it part of rote and ritual? Is it part of what you're called to do, supposed to do? People will talk in the community if you don't. Well, what is it? Why do you come here? You may come here because, you know, you meet your friends here and, and pastor does something crazy, you never know what he's going to do, or we sing a song or music, or, or Jerry shares one of those make me a blessing videos where all of a sudden it just kind of brings it together for us. And sometimes we come here pretty, pretty sleepy, I'm looking around. Good. Nobody's asleep yet. Okay, very good. We come here a little sleepy. Sometimes we come here a little awake, but we come here. And the challenge is, what, what, what happens? What do you expect different this year than you got last year? I mean, seriously. Do you know how the Church of Jesus Christ just simply rolls over? I mean, we do. We just roll over. There's not a much excitement going on in our lives sometimes. We don't have an expectation of what Jesus will do. We just come, go through the ritual. We leave here. Where am I going to go eat after church? I mean, that's an important thing. It's, a, you know, part of the love feast. But, but what happens to us? God, God didn't create us to roll over. God said, I put within you a quickened spirit. I put within you a spirit that says, now go do something. You know, go do something. That's what God says to us. God says, as we enter into a new year, this is a new opportunity. This is the year of Jubilee. Blow the horn. Because this is a year when all say we don't have to live the same life. We don't have to put up with the old. Thank God that it's over and we get a new start and a new beginning. Isn't that what we want sometimes? Isn't that what we want when we ask our spouse to forgive us sometimes? Can we start over? <laughs> oh, did I blow it? It's not right. I didn't mean to do it. But, but that's what God expects. He expects those opportunities. And that's what God has the power to do that for us. God can forgive the past. God can be with us in the present. God will guide and direct us into the future. That's why we can head forward to it. But do you know what? Man, I tell you, sometimes the church of Jesus Christ is numb. Is numb. Look at the church of Jesus Christ. Sometimes what we do is, bless it, we come here, we celebrate, we sing the songs, we get, excited, we, we get that spirit in us, and then we walk out of this door, and it usually doesn't take us over 30 minutes or an hour to suddenly fall back into the routine that the culture says that we need to fall back into. And the church becomes mute. It becomes numb in the world itself. John Wesley was concerned about that. John Wesley said, why in the world, being an Anglican pastor, shouldn't this make a difference in my life throughout the coming week? All it made a difference was, was on Sunday morning. He was a minister and he said it. That's what he talked about. He said, all we do is come and we just want to get ourselves filled up. We want to be, and we don't expect too much. We don't want to get too excited. We don't want to be too jubilee. We just want to come and get it. And then, you know what? We'll just go out and do our thing. And if every once in a while it spills over to somebody, well, Lord help them. Give them a towel. You know? I mean, you know? But Jesus said, no. 
you, you talked about today, b b the bushel on a hill, you know, not to be quiet, not to be silent, but to put the light up there so people can see us. We're making a difference in the world. That's what it's to be. That's what God calls us. You know why the world is in the shape that it's in? Because the church of Jesus Christ is not the church of Jesus Christ the way God first called it to be. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm preaching to you, friends. I'm preaching to you because that's what God says. God says, you don't even expect anything. So what? Am I going to give anything to you? I'm going to give it to somebody who's expecting, somebody who's asking me for it. Somebody who doesn't give me the little prayers to do little things, but also gives me the big stuff that says this is impossible to do unless God enters the picture and makes it happen. That's the kind of new year that God calls us to. Now, some of us, we look, we say, oh, man, the world's going to Paul. But what am I? I'm just a person here in Mingo, Iowa. I can't make a difference. God said, are you kidding me? That's like the 12 people that I used to be friends with. You know, I called them to be my disciples, and look what happened. And then a guy named John Wesley, who I also said, John, what are you going to do with this? John said, I'm all, I have to preach. And the church said to him, John, we don't need you to preach anymore. But I'm an I'm anchoring minister. John, you can't preach in our church because you know what? You're preaching a little bit too much of a revival. You're preaching a little bit too much like Jubilee. So what did John do? He goes out and stands on his father's grave because it's the only land he could stand on. And he starts preaching that. You know what happened? The church pretty well cleared out. And they all came out there to listen to what John had to say because you know what? He was preaching Jubilee. He said, this is the way it needs to be. We can be something different. But do you know what? We kind of settle into it. It's what Jesus talked about, that numbness, that, that, that lukewarmness. Oh, there's a dangerous word. He said, we're like lukewarm. You know, man, we don't expect anything to happen, and bless what? Bless it. We, we don't get anything to happen. You know what's okay with us, whatever. God said, no, man. He said, it's important for you to understand that, that, that you are asked to become something to be something so that you can go to the next step, which is not just holding on to it yourself, but doing, being and doing. That's what Jesus talks all about, isn't it? I want you to be transformed. I want you to be there. I want you to be my ambassadors and all this. Why? For so the fields are wide into harvest. I want you to make a difference. I want you to go out and live your life. I don't care if you just blow it. Go out there and smile at somebody, love somebody, pay attention, pray for somebody, and you know what? You will not believe the transformation will take place if you just speak it. Because you know what? A lot of people don't speak it. A lot of churches don't speak it. A lot of churches sit there, lay there. They let the new year come and go, and it's nothing important. It's not a year of jubilee. They don't even know how to say amen for it, right? But you do. You've been practicing. You showed me. It's okay to do it. You live out of that, and, and what, you, what you are becoming how you are coming in your relationship with God, how God is growing within you. If, if you give God, he said, give me the size of a mustard seed and watch what happens. I can transform the world. You don't even understand what that means. We don't even give God a mustard seed. Someone said to me this week, what are you going to ask people to do? And I said, what we're going to do is we're going to involve ourselves. I've been praying about this. What are we going to do? Okay, God, we're going to find out where God wants us to be. It's what John Wesley said. John Wesley said to the people who are called Methodists, he get them together, and here's what he said to them. He goes, uh, well, it's written in that little uh, sheet that I have on the, on the bay there. But th the question was this. Where is God nudging you to grow in your faith by the end of the year? You hear that? Where is God, where is God nudging you to grow in your faith by the end of the year? Some people go, oh, I don't want to grow. I just want to survive. I just want to be a dim bulb, you know? I don't want to get all excited about, you know what? I just want it to happen, whatever happens. That's the way I go. Can you imagine that? Jesus said, you know what? Don't, live, don't give yourself up for that. Don't live second choices, second chances. You give it up. What, what is God nudging you? How is, where is God nudging you to grow in your faith at the end of this year? And where would you like to see yourself in your faith journey by the end of this year? Anybody ever ask you that question? Huh? Anybody? Pastor ever ask you that question? That's what John Wesley asked. I tell you what, you know what this is? This is a book of, of Wesley's hymns that I got in England 40 years ago. And in the front, it said, Selected Hymn Tunes uh, for the Use of the People Called Methodist, First Edition Corrected, London, 1770. Do you hear this? In 1770, he was writing songs with his brother, talking about, what are you going to be so that you can do? He said, how... How do you want God to work with you this coming year so that you realize the hunger that God has placed within you and you actually do something? Here's what he says. 
You can get away with it for a year maybe, but after 10 years of not saying, how does God want me different by the end of the year, it begins to take a toll on us in our life. You with me? Now think about that in other ways. God, how, how do you want me to be different in my marriage than I was when I first said, oh, do I ever love you? I'll swim the deepest ocean. I'll climb the highest mountain. I'll do all those kinds of things, you know. God said, you know what? He said, I want you to fall in love with me the same way. I want you to ask me the same question. How's it going to be different? How's it going to be different? How's it going to be different? It's not a, it's not a demand that, that is painful. It's a demand that says you have no idea what this could bring you. That's what God says to us. How are you going to be different this year at the end of the year? John Wesley decided that that's what he wanted to ask the people called Methodists. He had a watch night service, and he said to them, here's the question I have for you. Where's God, how God wants to make you different by the end of the year? And, and you know what? I, I built you. I put that hunger within you, and if you don't feel it, it's because you're numb to it. Listen to me. You ask me, and you know what? You shall receive. Ever heard that passage? You'll see what can happen if all of a sudden you ask, and you see what I can do. You know what? I, I will stir up in you what you don't even know that's even there. The mark of the Christian, the mark of the person filled with the Holy Spirit, you know what it is? A hunger for God. And if you don't have that hunger yet, it's because you're not in touch with what your Creator, what our God put within each one of us. God says, I'm making you with a spiritual hunger and you will be satisfied. You may fill it with all kinds of things, but you will never be satisfied until you fill it with my spirit. And you know what? I'll even be there to help you, to guide you, to enthuse you, to get you to a point where all of a sudden you will want to know me. You'll want to hunger for me and you watch what will happen. I will not only transform you and you'll be hungry to come back to me to be able to feed every week because you get kind of worn out feeding other people. But you know what? I'm going to feed you again. You know what? You're going to go out. You're going to make a difference. You're going to make a difference in your life. You're going to make a difference in your family's life, in relationships. You're going to make a difference. Guess what? You're going to make a difference in the world. You're going to make a difference in Mingo. Do you hear what I'm saying? And it's because you allow the God within you to come out. That's what that prayer was all about. Allow the God, and come out. that's what that make a blessing song was about today. Make me a blessing. Let it come out in me so that the, the, make Jesus what? Shine. That's what I want. Make Jesus shine. Make me a blessing for someone today, not just for me, but for others, that I might be the ambassador and make that kind of thing happen. It says to us, what do you want to be different? John Wesley asked that of the Methodists. Every time he got together with them, he'd say to them in these small groups, in the church groups and everything else, he'd say, how's your soul today, brother? How do you want to be different at the beginning of the year that you will, at the beginning of the year, how will you be different by the end of the year? What is it that you want? That was a critical thing. That's a question that Jesus would ask the disciples in a thousand different ways. He'd say to them, you want to stay this way? People go, whatever. Jesus says, you know what? John Wesley said, if you do not move forward, you'll slip back. You can get away with it for a year, but after 10 years, you get numb, and the church get numb. And all of a sudden, you know, we don't care if we get new people coming in. We don't care. We're here, we can pay the bills, whatever, we can do our thing. She said, that's not what it's about. What, what's about is transforming to thy kingdom comes, what we pray for in the Lord's Prayer, and that we might be the avenue of making that happen. That's what John Wesley said. If you're Methodist, that's the mark. When people, when John Wesley got together, he got 10 folks together. He started this thing called the Holy Club, you know, because he's trying to work out their salvation, figure out what's going on. Then, of course, you know how God is. He walks down the street called Aldersgate. His heart feels his heart strangely warmed. That means he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, his whole life changed. And he, before you know it, here we are today, part of the Methodist with 12 to start with. We got more than 12 here today. God said, I'm not done yet. I am not done and neither were your parents or your grandparents or the people who put that spark in you, the pastors that have preached here and others. That spark is alive in you. God says, just give it over. And you know what? I'll just feed it and feed it. And you know what? I'll meet the hunger and you'll be so sad. It'll be amazing. How it'll be. And the transformation of the world will take place. He said, how's your soul today? How do you want to be different? Many years ago, I had an old Methodist pastor who was talking to me about different things. And you know what he said to me? He said, years ago... The Methodist pastors were required to ask everybody in their congregation, where do you want to be different by the end of the year? How do you want God to work in you so that what are you going to see transformed and different in you by the end of the year? You hear that? And they were required to write it down. And they were required to hold you accountable for it. 
the old guy said, that's how we did a lot of our program stuff. We'd find out what people wanted to do, where they were going. That's what Psalm we preached about. That's the, the programs we offer. We did all that kind of stuff on the basis of what people were, what God was leading you to do so that through that feeding of that, all of a sudden, miraculously, God will begin to transform and change the world and things will happen that we that, you know happen will take place. Well, we got real smart. We didn't need it anymore. <laughs> we got rid of it. Back in 1980s, the beginning, the United Methodist Church decided to reintroduce it. And so they said to people in local churches as pastors, I need you to write down where do you see yourself, where's God nudging you, and where do you see yourself different by the end of the year? What's your prayer? Where God wants to lead you, how are you going to be different? Y'all remember what I said? Y'all with me? Where what that's about? Now, I didn't do that in my congregations, at least to begin with, and I, and I didn't, because, but I got somebody who transferred into our church. And you know what? That person said to me, oh, and by the way, uh, here. I said, what's this? said, it's my, where I'm going to be different by the end of the year. He said, where'd you get this at? He goes, well, the pastor said, Methodist Church, that's what we had to do. And I thought, really? Whoa, I'd have a revolt in my churches if I did something like that. They'd all go, I'm going into my prayer closet. Nobody needs to know. In fact, I'm going to go so deep in my prayer closet, I'm not even going to let God know. But that's not what God asked for. God said, you, I want you to really think about that. I don't want it to be same old, same old. That's not who I am. That's not why I came into the world. Didn't you just celebrate Christmas? Jesus comes. Jesus is with us. Emmanuel. I, I don't want you to do the church like you've always done it. I want you to step up to the next rung. I want you to see what that's about. That's what John Wesley prayed for. He said, oh, that the people called Methodists would never lose their fire. Where do you want to see yourself different at the end of the year from where you are now? Do you even expect it? Well, I can't do it. It's impossible. No, it's not because it's not all about you. <laughs> There's a bigger kingdom, a wider goal, a mission and a ministry and a vision that I want you to pick up. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray this coming week about what I just said to you. It's there in that little bulletin piece. And, and it says this. Where is God nudging you to grow in your faith by the end of the new year? And where would you like to see yourself in your faith journey by the end of the new year? Now, I preach that to you so that you understand you're now going to be held responsible for that. You have not because you ask not. You have not because you don't realize. But God said, I feel sorry for you when I preach to you, when Jesus preached it, because now you're going to be held accountable for it. I want you to think about that this week. I want to offer you opportunity to be on a journey. I'm going to go on it. I, I invite all of you to be on it with me. But I want you to pray about that this week. I really do. Even if it's whatever. But I want you to see where God can lead you and where God can lead us in this. See what God can do. You with me? It's part of the covenant relationship. Here's what I do. I promise you that we as a church will not be the same. I promise you that we because of God's grace, we'll not have to write down another year, zero members added to our church. You're good people. God works through you in amazing ways. But God also says, it's been a while. I just want to welcome you back. I want to make a difference in your life so that by the end of next year, you can tell a story. I once was lost. Now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. And sometimes you won't even have to say it. People say to you, what happened to you this year? Where did that come from? Give me a mustard seed and watch what I do. Let's pray together. God, you present us with the opportunity this Sunday to receive communion. Oh, that's covenant. This is common union with you. It's not just refreshment time. It's the opportunity to be filled with your spirit. That's what we're asking for. To remember who we are and whose we are. To remember, oh God, that we're not